Modeling faces is one of those things that many people struggle with, and it's pretty obvious when you notice how many people download models instead of making them, which is fine, but I know a lot of you want to make characters from scratch. A common method is to use sculpting tools, but if you want to animate it, then you'll have to learn about retopology, which could melt your brain if you're new to the concept. The method I prefer is box modeling, and it's how I made all of these characters right here. What's great about it is that if you're careful, you end up with a good topology that makes animating easy. No retopology necessary. And the way I learned how to do this is I found a bunch of pictures of face models with good topology, I analyzed them and simplified them as much as I possibly could until I ended up with the method that I'm about to show you. The easiest way to start learning about it is by doing it with a cube. So let's add in a cube with shift A and we can tab into edit mode right here and look from the front. I'll add the first loop with control R and we'll put it right about here. This is going to be above the eyebrows. Let's add another one in the middle and with that selected, we can control B to bevel and scroll up so that there is one more loop in the center right there. This is going to be about as wide as we want our nose to be if you wanna have a nose. Let's add another one right here. This is gonna be below the eyes where around the cheekbones would be. Now we can go into face select mode and just select all of these faces right here and I to inset. Now, if you want the mouth to be very wide, you can use these faces right here and inset them like that. But what I prefer to do is add loop cuts right here that cut through the center of the eyes vertically. And then we can select these faces right here and eye to inset like that. Now let's create another loop cut right here. This is going to help create an area for the nose. If you don't want a nose, you don't have to put this loop. Then we can select these faces right here and eye to inset and make this pretty small like that. This is going to be for the mouth area. Now I can select these squares over here, shift select these ones and I to inset one more time. And now let's go back into object mode and shift D to duplicate this and then I'll just hide it in the outliner because this is what we'll be building off for all of the other examples. At its most basic level, this is the method. And when you understand what all of the loops are for, then you'll be able to use this method to make a wide variety of head shapes. This loop goes around the face and it's gonna be used for the eyebrows and trace the shape of the jaw. These loops go around the eyes and these faces are going to be for the eyelids and the eye sockets. This loop goes around the mouth and above the tip of the nose. This area is used for the mouth and the lips. You can use these spots for the nose, these spots for the cheeks, and you can use some of the faces down here for the chin. All of these loops will allow for easy face deformation when you rig and animate it, and you can add more loops for detail. Let's start pushing some of these points around to show you what it can do. I'll start by adding a subdivision surface modifier to smooth this out just a little bit. If you want it to be symmetrical, you can turn on this symmetry option up here, or you can delete half of it and use a mirror modifier. Let's select these faces right here and pull them in. And let's shift select these faces down here and E to extrude. If you want the eyes to be more round, you can use the loop tools add-on. You just have to make sure it's enabled. You can go to edit preferences, add-ons, and just make sure that loop tools is enabled. And for this, I like to add another loop cut with control R to split the eyes in half. You can just select this rectangle right here right click, go to loop tools at the top and circle. Now we can use S to scale and S and X. You can just start pushing some of these around to make it a little more face shaped. I'll grab these points from the mouth and bring them out so the mouth is a little wider. We can also grab these and bring it down to kind of create some like laugh lines like that. If you want cheekbones, you can use some of the points over here and bring them out like that. And if you want a bigger brow, then you can use some of these faces or some of the points at the top right here and pull them forward a little. You can use these faces right here for the nose and E to extrude. And if you don't want the nose to be a big block like this, then you can look from the side with three and just rotate it like that. Point sliding is going to help you quite a bit. So we can go into vertex select mode. And when you have a point selected, you can press G and then G again, and it will slide along like that, which will help you make some smoother shapes. Another thing I like to do is use the shrink and fatten tool, which is Alt S. So we can just select some of these points in the middle right here and press Alt S. And you can see that it's going to push out like that in the normal direction. We can do that with the points on the side right here also to pull them in. If you want a chin, you can use some of the faces down here. You can just pull this out like that. For eyelids, we can just select these faces right here and eye to inset just a little bit. Select the top and bottom points. We're not going to select the ones in the middle and we can just drag these out. And it'll look a little weird at first, but we got to keep going. So let's just select 
the faces in the middle now and we can E to extrude them inward. And if you want something that looks realistic, then references are gonna be your best friend. So if you look at some references, you might notice that eyelids tend to be quite a bit bigger. Select some of these points right here and move them up. And we can also do the same thing at the top to create whatever eye shape we want. You can also drag some of these points up. For lips, we can come over to the mouth area, create another loop cut with Control R, and I'll push it pretty close. We can just select the top points and bring these up. I'll do the same thing with the bottom. Take some of the points on the side, move them a little closer. We can move the center points in a little bit like that. Now let's add a loop cut in here with Control R. I'll select the bottom ones and GG to slide it all the way. It's okay that it's on top of the other points for now. We'll do the same thing up here. Then we'll press three to go into face select mode, select these front faces. I'll turn the subdiv modifier back on. And when we pull this out, you can see that it looks like lips now. You might notice that in a lot of references of lips, that the lips aren't very wide on the edges right here. They kind of just go right into the crease of the mouth. Sometimes the symmetry option up here gets a little buggy, so I'm actually going to delete half of the face. You can do that by just selecting one of these loops with Alt and left click, X, delete the faces, then hover over this side and press L to select the whole half, X, and then you can delete those faces too. Come over here to the modifiers, add a mirror modifier and make sure it's at the top. And I like to turn clipping on also. For more complex shapes, we have a few options. We have proportional editing, multi-res sculpting, shrink wrapping, or a combination of the three. Proportional editing is when it starts to get really fun, and you can turn that on up here by pressing this button, or you can press O on your keyboard to toggle it on and off. And I also like to use connected only. So let's select some of the points around the mouth, and we can press G to start moving it. You can see we have this circle, that's the area of influence, and we can scroll up and down to change the size of that. We can also rotate and scale with this. So let's make this person a little happier, and let's move the cheeks up a little too. You can bring the forehead out, and let's bring that down a little bit. So it's starting to look maybe a little evil. Proportional editing also works with Alt S. So you can use this to thicken parts of the face like this. When you get to this point, I recommend just kind of going wild and breaking things as much as you can. If you need some more detail for the head, you can add a loop or two right here and I'll use Alt S. Another thing I like to do with proportional editing is use the two sphere tool. So you can use the shortcut, which is Alt Shift and S, or you can use this tool, long press on it, and then you have this option right here. Basically what this does is it takes whatever you select, Blender will try to turn that part into a sphere. And you can see as we scroll up and down it's changing the area of influence so if you push it just a little bit you can get some very interesting shapes you can also use this to start off with a round head so we can go back into object mode let's just hide this and turn on the one that we saved from before let's duplicate this again so we have an extra one go back into edit mode i'll add a few loops and we can select everything and alt shift and s and you can see this is going to turn it into a spherical shape right here. Let's add a subdivision surface modifier. And just like before, we can start pushing some of these shapes around. I'm going through pretty much the same steps for making the mouth and the eye sockets. But for the nose, let's just select these points right here and extrude straight out so we have a long nose now. And again, we can just use proportional editing to kind of go wild and make some interesting shapes. When you add loop cuts to something that's already round, if you want, you can smooth them out. Immediately after adding a loop, you can come to this box down here. And for smoothness, usually what I like to do is just turn this up to 0.5. So let's just see how terrifying we can make this character be. Let's make this one very angry looking. Let's give this character a little bit of a chin also. I like to also add some spheres for eyes. So back in object mode, we can press shift A. I'll just add a UV sphere and pull it off to the side, rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis and scale it down. You can add a mirror modifier to it. And for the mirror object, we can just select the head right here. So now we have two of them. Then I like to go up to the snapping options up here and turn on face project and set that to center. So now when we press G and hold control, we can snap it to the face right here. So right now this is absolutely terrifying. So let's come back in here and maybe move some of the eye area around to make room for the eyes. Let's add some lips in here too. I'll just add a loop right here, then I'll select it and extrude it out. It's just gonna be a little more simple than what we did before. Shade everything smooth, see what this looks like with some lighting on it. Let's make these eyes black. 
So it's pretty easy to make some very nightmarish characters for sure. A quick shading tip for accentuating some of the creases, you can add a new material for the skin and we can use an ambient occlusion node. So you can just add that and plug it directly into the base color right here. And you can see already we're getting more definition around the mouth area right here. And we can push this to the extreme with a color ramp and move the black stop right here up a little higher. And if you don't want it to be completely black, then you can turn it to whatever color you want. We can bring back our base shape and duplicate it again, and then hide the duplicate. For multi-res sculpting, you're going to need a multi-resolution modifier. And when you have this in here, you can press subdivide. And this is going to look like the subdivision surface modifier, but it's a little different because it actually lets you sculpt on the new topology that you see here. Let's press this maybe one more time. And in edit mode, let's just create some eye sockets and a mouth real quick. And I'll make a simple nose also. And then we can go into sculpting mode with control tab and you can just select sculpting mode right there. Now you have access to all of these sculpting tools right here. So if you want a more defined brow or something like that, then you can draw that in like this. You can also use the grab tool to move parts around, make your brush bigger with F like that, and you can start pushing things around however you want. And the multi-resolution modifier is pretty interesting because if we shut it off, you can see that we just have our normal base mesh right here. And it also lets us add and remove detail right here. So if you wanted even more detail, then you can subdivide it again. And you can see now we have even more faces to work with while we're sculpting. If you want the base mesh to actually be affected, then you can use this checkbox right here, which will actually change the base mesh as you're sculpting. So let's make this one very sad instead. We already made one that looks angry. The snake hook tool can be a lot of fun for this also to get interesting shapes like this. If you get any weird overlapping shapes, you can hold shift and then left click like that, and that will uh, smooth things out for you like this. And for all of this, I'm just using my mouse. Let's put some creases around the eyes, some lines on the forehead, and I'll use the crease brush to tighten up some areas like around the nose. Let's give this character some eyes. We'll go back to object mode. And just the same way we did before, I'll use UV spheres and the mirror modifier. Except let's come into edit mode and just pull this vertex in right there so it looks like we kind of have pupils. So multi-res sculpting is a good way of adding detail, which lets you still turn the, the quality up and down. So you can make it as detailed as you want, really. All right, let's hide. Let's hide. All right, let's hide this one now and get a duplicate of our fresh cube right here. And we'll talk about the shrink wrapping method. So usually for this, what I like to do is model just like a basic shape of the head that we want. And you don't have to worry about topology for this, really. So I'll just add in a cube. Control 2 to add in a subdivision surface modifier. We can tab into edit mode and I'll just start moving this around. So I'm just making something that's a little closer to a typical head shape that we would expect from like a human character. I'll just rename it reference so I can remember which one it is. And I'm just going to turn up the viewport levels so it's a lot smoother. This will help make the shrink wrap modifier a little more accurate. And just so this doesn't get in the way too much, I'm going to make it so it always looks like a wireframe. And we can do that over here under object properties. Go to viewport display and we can turn on wire. Now let's bring back our cube right here. We can select that, go to the modifiers and turn on shrink wrap. And then we can just select in the outliner. We can select the reference right here. So for simple shapes like this, you can actually shrink wrap this whole cube with all of the points in place directly to it. So let's add a few more loops in here and let's actually just apply the shrink wrap modifier right here so when we go into edit mode you can see that it's actually stuck to the surface now and we can add another one if we want it to continue to snap to that surface right there face snapping will help you a lot for this so you can have face snapping turned on and it will snap to the surface of the reference so you can use this to get things into the right position where you want them like the mouth and the nose and stuff like that and when it's looking good to you, you can just apply the shrink wrap modifier. I usually like to add a subdiv modifier, and then you can come into here and just start moving stuff around the way that you would normally like this. So shrink wrapping the entire cube with all of the points on it and whatnot usually works pretty well for simple shapes like this. 
But for something more complex like this weird big uh, big jaw chad head, you can see that it has some spots that go in, some spots that stick out in a strange way. And if we try to shrink wrap to this, then it gets kind of messy and hard to control. So what I like to do is start from scratch. And that just means starting with a cube like we did in the beginning. And you can add each loop one by one, just like I showed you. And you can use face snapping to snap it to the point on the reference where you want it to be. And just like with the other one, when you think it's looking good, you can just apply the shrink wrap modifier, add the subdiv modifier, and then use all of the other methods that I talked about to make your character as complex as you want. Just to show that it can be rigged, I'll add in an armature and rig it up quickly. I haven't rigged many faces, so don't expect this to be the best example. But basically what I'm doing is using vertex snapping to snap the ends of the bones to the points on the face. I turned off the subdiv modifier so I can reference the original mesh since that's what's going to be deforming. This last bone will be for moving the whole head, and you can use shift A to add that one in. I'll select all of the bones that aren't in the middle and use control F2 to batch rename them so that they all end with a dot L. And that way Blender knows that these are all on the left side. Then we can right click and symmetrize them. And just so we can move the bones around more freely, I'll disconnect them with Alt P. So they're still all parented to each other, they're just not connected anymore. Now go back into object mode, select the head and shift select the armature, control P and use automatic weights. I also like to keep the armature modifier above the subdivision. Now we can go into pose mode and move these bones around to test out some facial expressions. Some of the bones will probably move parts of the head more than you want, so usually what I'll do is go into weight paint mode and select the large head bone and make sure you have auto normalize turned on. And then you can just paint on the parts of the head that you don't want to move around as much. As you can see, it deforms nicely and creases form in the spots that you'd expect. Like I said, it's not perfect. It could definitely use a little weight painting to make some parts deform a little better. But considering this is mostly automatic weights, it works pretty well. If you want everything that I made in this video, you can get that on Patreon. Modeling heads is really fun now that I use this method, but if you want your characters to be more than just floating heads, you're going to need a body. And the quickest and easiest way to model a body is what I show in this video right here.